ladies, what's up? Happy summer to you. I don't know if it's hot where you're at, but here in sunny Southern California, it is getting pretty hot. This weekend it was 100 degrees almost. So instead of coffee today, I have fruit infused water, my special little fancy straw, and I'm going to talk to you guys today about three ways you can get your husband to do what you want him to do. Sounds so amazing, right? I'm sure you clicked on the link because you saw that title and thought, oh my gosh, I need to know these three ways to get my husband to do what I want him to do. Well, ladies, I'm here to tell you that it can happen. I'm gonna tell you how it can happen. And as always, I'll be keeping it very funky with you as I tell you those ways. First of all, I've been married personally for 11 years, together 12 years, and let's keep it funky. We've had our good times and we had our bad times. A little backstory about my personal relationship with my amazing, sexy, hot husband is I was a single parent when I met him. My son was about nine years old when I met Vince, and I had been rocking the single mom life for a while at that point, and I had raised a little mini Marine, and I was very bossy, very controlling, and because of the abuse and hurt that I had in, the, in my life prior to meeting my husband, I was very distrusting. So today I'm gonna give you these three tips to help you out and not having to go through the process that I went through. A lot of times we forget that things that happen in our lives, problems, issues, even tragedies that happen in our lives can be used to help other people in their lives. So that's why I'm sharing today. Um, I know that a lot of you that are part of the hug movement are married women. I know a lot of you who are part of the hug movement are divorced or widowed, sadly, or you're single. And so if I can help you in any way not do the things I'm about to tell you, then, um, you know, Praise God. So, so first of all, the number one thing that I did wrong in my marriage and trying to change my husband was, are you ready? Get in close. Try to change my husband. Sister girls, we cannot change our husbands. If we can realize that God intended every encounter to be relational, and if we can realize that God wants us to work with each other, then we won't have the mindset of how can I change my husband? We won't be clicking on ads or blogs or posts on social media that say three ways to change my husband. When my husband and I got together, I was so controlling and out of control and pretty much out of my mind that the littlest things would bug me. One, the way he held his fork. Yes, ladies, it's true. I was controlling the way my husband was eating his food. Does it really matter? No, but the fact that he held the fork so close to the bottom of the fork really got on my nerves. And so I would tell him, that's not the way you hold your fork, as if he is a nine-year-old child. Do not do that, ladies. Um, some other things I like to control is everything, everything in the house. I would tell him, you need to take the trash out. I would not say, hey, honey, can you take the trash out for me? I would look at him and say, you need to take the trash out. Do you think, ladies, that that went over very well? Mm, no, I do not recommend talking to your husband like that ever. And so... Obviously, I learned the hard way, the three ways to change your husband. Number one, of course, I got God's word in my hand, my Bible that is literally falling apart, people. I just don't want to get a new Bible because there's so much goodness written in my Bible, and it's so awesome to go back. Even today, as I was preparing for this message for you guys, I was looking at some things I wrote about my own husband in the word and it was so refreshing and nice to see. So tip number one for three ways to change your husband. 
would be found in Proverbs two, uh, Proverbs 3, 5. Trust in the Lord with all your heart and lean not on your own understanding. In all your ways, acknowledge him and he shall direct your path. Sister girl, the number one thing you need to do is go to the Lord. If there's something not right, if there's something disheartening, if there's something that's bothering you, before you talk to your husband, can I please encourage you to talk to God first? Just spend some time in prayer. Ask God to show you a verse. Ask God to lead you in whichever way. But we need to trust God in these situations. I can tell you for the first five to six years of my marriage, I did not go to God first. But then some wise woman came to me and told me this, this verse, go to God first. Pray to God that God would change his heart, that God would change his mind, God would soften his heart. Whatever it is, whatever the desire that you have in your heart and changing him, go to God first. Because it's going to do a couple things. One, it's going to relieve you of that burden. Two, God is going to check your heart before he makes any changes. And I think that's so important for us to check our own heart and where we stand and why we feel this way before we expect our husbands to change anything. So it says, trust in the Lord with all your heart. So we have trust God. We really have to trust God with these things. I'll be honest. There were times I was so insecure in my marriage because of um, being trapped in a relationship for three years and being beaten and abused verbally, uh, physically, mentally. This person literally held me captive in my relationship. So every time my husband would leave the house to go somewhere, I would be nervous that he was either a cheating or wasn't going to come home until like two in the morning because of what some, something someone else did to me. So I have to trust in my heart um, with all of my heart that God is in control of the situation. And so when we go to God and we tell God, Lord, my husband is doing this. God, I give you my full heart, my full um, attention. I give you everything that I am. Please, Lord come into the situation and work through this situation with me. God will work through it. And we need to lean on God's understanding what this word says, not what your girlfriends say, not what Wendy Williams says on the TV, not on what you see on the housewives or whatever, whatever. We need to rely on God's understanding what God's word says in our marriage. We really have to check ourselves, sister, on what is influencing us and who is influencing us in our marriage. Because if you're having the wrong influences come into your marriage, it is going to make your marriage so much harder. So let's go to tip number two, which is Proverbs 12, 4. An excellent wife is the crown of her husband, but she who causes shame is like rottenness in the bones. Sisters, we cannot be dishonoring our husband in our words or in our thoughts. Just because you don't say it doesn't mean God doesn't hear it. Just because it's not coming out of these lips does not mean that God does not see the darkness in your heart. We have got to honor our husbands, even when it hurts. Now, side note, of course, if there's abuse going on or anything like that, then you do need to speak to a trusted person like a pastor or a really trusted family friend, somebody that can help you in that situation. But if your husband's not taking out the trash regularly, you do not need to get on the phone and call your sister girl and be like, girl, this man ain't no good. He don't even take out the trash. Okay, that's not honoring your husband. You need to get in a habit of honoring your husband. Um, I am the number one person who had to learn to do this, and I learned it the hard way, so I'm just trying to help you out. So again, an excellent wife is the crown of her husband, but she who causes shame like rottenness uh, is like rottenness in the bones. Are you shaming your husband in your words? Are you shaming your husband in your actions? Are you shaming your uh, husband around your friends? Maybe you have a set of friends that maybe they're not saved. Maybe their relationship is really weird and kind of jacked up and they like to talk about each other. Are you bringing shame into your conversation? Are you shaming? Are you telling your husband's uh, most difficult struggles? Um, are you making fun of your husband? What are you doing? Are you creating um, rottenness in your own marriage and not even knowing it because of what your mouth is saying? Are you honoring your husband? And my third 
verse that I have for you today is going to be in Proverbs 31. Of course, we all strive, right, to be a Proverbs 31 woman. So Proverbs 31, 10 says, Who can find a, a virtuous wife? For her worth is far above rubies. The heart of her husband safely trusts her. Do your Does your husband safely trust you? Have you built that up in your marriage for your husband to safely trust you? Um, she will have no lack of gain. Sisters, if your husband safely trusts you, whatever that is that you're needing or uh, wanting, you will have no lack of gain. She does him good and not evil. This is so good. Are you a virtuous woman? Are you speaking life into your husband? I've been guilty of the same thing. What I've personally learned as a wife of 12 years, 11, 12 years, is that we have the ability as the woman in their life to speak and mold them into the man that God already created them to be. I tell my husband every day, you're capable, you can do it. I walk him. Now, ladies, listen to this. Okay, because maybe some of you need to do this. I get up at 4 a.m. when my husband gets up and I walk him to the door, which is right there. Every single morning, I walk him to the door. I hug him. I give him a kiss. I tell him I love him, that he's going to have a great day. And I embrace him and I send him off with love. Now, when that door right there shuts, I begin praying for my husband for his day. I pray that God would protect him and bless him. I, try, I play, pray traveling mercies over him. I plead the blood of Jesus over him. And then throughout my day, as I, I don't start working until 6.30 a.m., so I have that gap of time to get up and get ready. Now, technically, honestly, I work at home. I don't have to get up at 4 a.m. with him. I don't have to send him out through that door, but I want to honor him. I want to bless him. I want to help mold and shape him into the man that God created him to be. That is a simple way to do it. And guess what? At five o'clock when he comes through that door, guess who's standing at that door? With a smile, with a welcome home. I'm so glad you're home. How was your day? What can I do for you? And I make sure that my home is picked up. Now, that may sound old-fashioned to you, and trust me, I am not an old-fashioned kind of girl. However, I believe that the less stress he has when he comes home, the more focused he could be on me in our marriage. If he comes home to disaster, if he, if he has to make dinner because dinner's not ready, if, you know, just things are a mess, it's hard to relax in a mess. All right, so I try to make sure that the house is picked up, that dinner is ready if we're not going out or if I'm or picking up dinner, whatever it is. I try to make it as peaceful as possible because he has a two hour drive home from work and I want to, him to come home and I want to be a blessing to him. I don't want him to come home and I start piling on this list, ladies, of the things that he needs to do because I used to always tell him what he needed to do. I didn't realize I needed to ask him to do it, right? Somebody, can I get an amen? We need to check the way we talk to our husbands. If there's any single mamas out there who raised kids for a long time and then all of a sudden fell in love, got married, and started telling their husband what they needed to do instead of respecting him as the man that he is and honoring him and asking him in a respectful way, please do that. Start doing that now. Your life will be so, so much better. So those are just some tips that I have for you. The three ways... I get my husband to do what I want him to do is I don't get him to do what I want him to do at all. I go to God. I tell him what's going on with me, how I'm feeling. I allow God to search my heart first before even changing Vince's heart. Search my heart, God. Show me what I need to change about me in order for this to stop bothering me. God searches it. He does whatever. And a lot of times nothing changes in me, but I notice a change in my husband and I didn't even have to have a conversation with him. God did it. That is the best way to get any problems taken care of. 
Two, we just want to honor him with our words. We want to speak life over our husbands. That's how I get him to change, is not to change him, but to speak life into him. He's a good man. He's an, um, a hard worker. He's a provider. He's my best friend. You know, you married ladies on here, whisper some sweet nothings into his ear once in a while. You know, spice things up. I'm not going to go full into it because we may have some single girls here and that's not for their ears. That's for when they get married. But what I'm saying is speak life into your husband. Um, and then the third way is just don't bring shame into any part of your marriage. Have conversations with God. Allow God to direct your conversations with your husband. Just love him and protect him. Because sisters, there's so many women out there who are struggling in their marriages. There are sisters out there who are standing and waiting for their marriages. There are sisters out there whose husbands have left and they miss them. But we have our husbands and we're not taking care of them the way that we should. So I hope that these three non-ways to change your husband helped you. And I hope that this week you will start speaking life and love to your husbands. I pray God shows you ways that you can bless your husband. Even if you work full time and you leave, I work full time, but I work from home. I'm blessed. Even when I didn't work from home and I had to commute and go, my posture towards my husband was always loving, welcoming. I love you. I want you in my life. I appreciate you. How can I bless you? God's word says that we are a helpmate. It doesn't say that we are less than. We are equal to, but we are, our job title is helpmate. We have the amazing talent to multitask. That's why God gave us that talent to multitask, to take care of kids, run business, run the household, do the dishes, do the laundry, take the kids here, do a kid project, love on your husband. All those things, God gave it to us in the form of a help mate that's what our title is in our marriage equal but he is the prov husbands are the provider they have the big shoulders they bear the weight of the world on their shoulders and the wife is the helpmate they're there to help and encourage and inspire and to help mold our husbands into the mighty amazing and talented men that they are so i hope that that helped you today if you have any comments please leave them below and as always head up gorgeous God's got you and so do I.